sand and surf, Tommy. Let the Pook's vacation begin. Pook, is, isn't that the goblin from the other day? Uh, I believe Wingay Wubba Jr. was his name. No, Kami, it's pronounced Wingay Wubba Jr. Uh, you have to try to prevent yourself from saying the wa until the power of wa compels you. Wingay Wubba Jr. Wingay. Oh, hi, Wingay. Uh, what can the Pook do for you? Well, you got the Bubba, you got the Junior, you got the Bubba, you got the Junior, you got the Bubba Junior. Yeah, you, um, well, you certainly do. Wingy, Bubba Junior. Well, it was really nice seeing you again. You know, you got the wing, you got the key, you got the wingy. Yeah, I can't really argue with that. Uh, so I'm just gonna take a nap now. You got the Bubba, you got the Junior, you got the Bubba Junior. That's what they say. Hey, hey, I'm just going to slip into unconsciousness, so, um, uh, why don't we get together later? But not to fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and a happy but not the fly to you too, Wingy. <laughs> Wingy. You seem to know each other quite well. Like I said, it's a long and stupid story, Kami. Well, I trust you in regards to your assessment of its length, but, um, why don't you leave it to me to judge the merits of its stupidity? Well, okay. His name wasn't always Wingy Wubba Jr. His name was Adrian, and he's my boss's nephew. His name was Adrian? Yeah, goblins can be named Adrian. Uh, they're not all named Sprixle and Sparklefartle, you know. Uh, some of them are just named Adrian. No, I'm just, well... There's a lot to unwrap so far. Well, let me do that for you. He's my boss's nephew, and there was this time when he thought that meant he was the Pook's boss by proxy. No, I can well imagine the type. I assume he felt he was entitled to some privileges, no doubt. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so last time I was in Gadget Sand, I already knew that I was cursed with immortality. Only Adrian, he didn't. Uh, my boss had sent me here to upgrade the teleorb transmitter, and while I'm trying to recabulate the man and ether emitter modulator, Adrian came up to me demanding I update his flubal account, or, or realign the magnetronic relays on the teleorb set, or, or some other fucking bullshit that I just knew I wasn't going to get paid for doing. A card, through and through. Oh, you don't know the half of it, Tommy. Uh, so I tell him to go fuck off, and he, well, he throws a hissy fit and kicks the transmitter right when I decouple the high-voltage plasma matrix. And the next thing the poop knows, I'm talking to the naked lady. So I take it that Adrian did not know that you would be, um, back shortly. No, he did not. Uh, so he's at once trying to convince the cops that my death was an accident, uh, while also trying to get street cred for killing the pook. The unmitigated nerve of this fellow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he knows the law in gadgets, then. No violence outside the Thunderdrome. Uh, the cops will kill him if they think he's murdered me. So he's all incompetent gnome. She didn't even graduate gnomish engineering school. And she broke her mother's heart to the cops. But to everyone else in town, to everyone else, he's all like, Yeah, yeah, I killed the pook. I'm a real badass. He knows the complexities of your relationship with your mother. Well, I don't know exactly what he said, Kami. Uh, the poop was talking to the naked lady. But I do know that he didn't have long to say it because you're never far from the naked lady in Gadget Sam. So there was a confrontation? I was pissed! Uh, it was bad enough that he killed me, but he fucked with my work, Kami. He fucked with my hard yet rewarding work. Uh, so I fired a warning shot at him. And I missed. How do you miss a warning shot? Oh, oh, you, you mean? Yeah, I, I missed right between his eyes. I was so fucking pissed at him that I guess, I guess I was just too angry to aim. So the next thing I know, the cops sent the pook to talk to the naked lady because I got violent outside the Thunderdrome. And Adrian, I, I take it he was right there beside you? No. No, he wasn't. Uh, most people aren't cursed with immortality like the pook is. I was standing before the naked lady alone, and it started to weigh on me. I saw him go down, Kami. I, I got really angry. And I saw him go down before the cops got me. I was 
just going to get to walk back to my corpse and he... Well, at the time the pook didn't have any idea at all what the afterlife was like. But I figured Adrian did. When I got back to my corpse, I saw him laying in the dirt with my bullet lodged between his eyes. And then he sat up and said, Wingay Wubba Jr. I gotta admit, I was glad I didn't kill him, Kami. Our powers were mismatched. I didn't really think about whether it was a fair fight. I was just pissed. But it looked like things were going to work out. Uh, the pook didn't one-shot him, so there'd be no real consequences. Or so I thought. His unique manner of speaking. Yeah, if Gadget Sand had been more than a desert outpost, there'd probably have been a healer around that could have taken care of his head wound, and Adrian would still be Adrian. But all anybody could do for him at the time was bandage up his head and hope for the best. So his head healed with a bullet lodged inside it, and now it's too late for magic bullshit to do anything about it. He's Wingay Wubba Jr. now. Well, he, he does seem to have made a successful career for himself. Uh, I mean, he did win first place, after all, in the freestyle rap competition. Kami, he's still my boss's nephew, and Sleaznik Entertainment Media was running the contest. Oh, yes, uh, I see. It all makes sense now. So now, it just gets kind of weird when he's around. Are you able to understand him when he speaks? No, I, I can't understand shit when he's talking. It's all, Wingy, you got the Wubba, you got the Junior, you got the Wubba Junior. I have no clue what the fuck he's talking about. But, but the way he says it, Kami. What about the way he says it? I don't know what he's saying, but I get the feeling he's not the same asshole he was when I shot him. But I don't know. I mean, he could be saying horrible shit to me, but I get the feeling... Wingy, what about you, yeah? Oh, hey, Wingy. Uh, Kami, you remember Wingy, Wubba Jr.? Well, you got the Wubba, you got the Junior, you got the Wubba Jr. Yeah, you, you, you sure do. You just do. Uh, look, look, it's been really swell catching up with you. I mean, it's been minutes since I last saw you. Well, you got the Wingy, you got the Junior, you got the Wubba, you got the Junior. Yep, and, and you got the Wubba Jr. Anyways, I, I have to go. I promised Kami I was going to track down Professor Leathergrip while I was in town. I know Kami would love to hear the professor tell one of his fireside stories on the beach tonight while we all get fucked up on Inky Black. Hmm? Why, yes, uh, th that sounds like a delightful evening's entertainment. Uh, uh, but I'll pass on the Inky Black. So I guess I'll see you around, Wingy. But not the fly... Yep, uh, definitely not the fly. <laughs> well, wingy. So, is there a Professor Leather Grip, or uh, was that just an excuse to end an awkward conversation? Of course there's a Professor Leather Grip. He's a famous gnomish lore master. I thought you said gnomes don't really care about the lore. I said most gnomes don't. Uh, some gnomes are really into the lore. Gnomes love learning things, and the lore is just something else you can learn. Uh, there are some gnomes who love the lore and just love to lock themselves up in a room full of books and study everything there is to study about it. Uh, but Professor Leathergrip, uh, he's a different kind of lore master. He didn't learn the lore by reading it in a book. He traveled around the world and talked to the people he encountered and heard their stories and learn the lore that way. Well, he certainly sounds like someone who could tell a good story. Hey, I I'm not kidding, Kami. Hey, he's a friend of my mom's. I can totally invite him to a little beach party tonight. And hey, he could tell you everything he knows about the lore of the world. And it wouldn't be weird or anything. Fireside stories told by a gnomish lore master. That sounds like the recipe for an enchanted evening. And we'll get fucked up on Inky Black, and it won't be weird! I am so glad to see you again, Pook. It's been ages since I've seen you or your mother. How is she, Pook? Yeah, my mom's, you know, she's doing fine. Uh, she's still mom. It's not weird that you're my mom's friend. The Pook tells me you're a gnomish lore master. Well, the Pook flatters me. 
I have traveled Azeroth from one end to another, following the ebb and flow of the world's drama, always from a safe distance, of course. I am very grateful our Pukamura happened into Gadget Sand when she did. It's one of life's great pleasures to meet with old friends by and by. And it's certainly not weird that you're an old friend of the Pook, or my mom. Oh, I've known the Pook for a long time, and her mother even longer. In a few days, I'm going to be heading off to the Dragon Isles, Pook. I hear most of the long-leggedy drama there has simmered down. It'll be safer for an old gnome like me to travel its land, meet its peoples, and learn their stories. In a few more days, I'll be leaving Gadget Sand for parts unknown. So I am truly blessed that the strangeness of this universe has paid out in this old gnome's favor. And I'm always pleased to meet a friend of the poop, Kami. Yeah, the universe. <laughs> it's really weird. And not that it's weird that you're my mom's friend, or, or that it's weird that you're my friend, or we're gnomes. We're fully grown adult gnomes. That, that, that's not weird. The weird part is our paths crossing at just the right time. Um, yes. Weird, Pook. Quite weird. But then again, what really is there that can be truly called weird on a planet that once got stabbed by a cosmic space giant? Uh, Certainly not you being my mom's friend, that's for sure. That's not weird at all. Yes, uh, speaking about how weird it is that our planet was once stabbed by a cosmic space giant, uh, I I was living in Ratchet at the time, and uh, while I certainly remember the day quite vividly, I'm afraid not much information about the particulars of the event uh, reached our sleepy port town. Uh, What have you learned of it on your journeys as a gnomish lawmaster? Bunge! Wabadunya! Oh, hey, Wingate. Uh, uh, I was just enjoying a nice evening on the beach introducing Kami to an old friend. Uh, a friend of the family. Uh, one of my mom's old friends. It's, it's not weird. <laughs> weird that, uh, it's not weird of you to join us if you want to. Uh, uh, Professor Leathergrip is just about to lay down the lore. Uh, you might learn something. You got the Baba, you got the Junior, you got the Baba Junior. Well. To tell the story of the cosmic space giant who once stabbed our planet with a really big sword, we have to begin with the fabric of space and time itself. A fabric that is woven into a fine garment the people of this world call the Magic Bull Shirt. Oh, don't get the pook started on the Magic Bull Shirt. Wingy. Is this a shirt that has the image of a bull on it, or or is it a shirt that is worn by a bull? Well, nobody rightly knows for certain. All that is known is the shirt is worn by the mightiest cosmic being in the universe. Bubba Junior. A being known to the peoples of this world only as the Blizzard Wizard. There are those who say the shirt is emblazoned with a bull whose magnificence is beyond mortal imagination. Some say that it's the blizzard wizard themselves that is the grandest specimen of bull ever to exist. Uh, So this blizzard wizard, is he the cosmic space giant who stabbed our planet with a really big sword? No, that would be the cosmic space giant known as Sorghum, or uh, Spartacus. Well, he's known by many names, you see, and I don't always rightly remember uh, which name is the correct name for the the region that I happen to find myself in. Got the Bubba, you got the Dunya, got the Bubba Dunya. Well, Wingy, uh, the cosmic space giant who stabbed our planet with a really big sword had hoped his magic team would be the magic team to control the magic bullshit of the Blizzard Wizard. Uh, Magic team? Uh, What exactly is a magic team, and, and which one was he on? 
Well, there are many magic teams, but there are three main magic teams who are seeking to control the power of the Blizzard Wizard's magic bullshirt. Uh, what team the cosmic space giant Sprinkle Hose was truly on is a matter of debate. Most people tend to agree that he was on Team Yellow Magic once upon a time, but that his fear and loathing of Team Purple Magic drove him to such a madness that he joined Team Green Magic because he believed it was the only way to save Team Yellow Magic. Yellow, Purple, and Green Magic teams. Oh yeah, uh, the Pook is always running into people from all the Magic teams. And trust me, uh, you don't have to join Team Green Magic just to be an asshole. Uh, Team Yellow Magic has its assholes too. Uh, there are Team Yellow Magic members who would take a bullet for a puppy. Uh, but there are also members who would shoot a puppy just to bring more glory to Team Yellow Magic. Well, yeah. What would you know? It is true. Team Yellow Magic only asks that you believe in the supremacy of Team Yellow Magic. What you do with Team Yellow Magic's powers, well, just trust that it's all part of Team Yellow Magic's glory. It is said that none believed in the supremacy of Team Yellow Magic like the cosmic space giant Sparkplug Lugs. Well, then why would he join Team Green Magic? Because he saw the power of Team Purple Magic, and it terrified him. Yeah, uh, Team Purple Magic has big titty goth girls and tentacle monsters. Not just the big titty goth girls, also the small titty goth girls, and the goth boys who kinda look like small titty goth girls, and those lanky, long-leggedy goths who are curiously ripped when they take their trench coats off. And, uh, this collective of goths and tentacle monsters, it made the cosmic space giant want to join Team Green Magic and, uh, stab the planet. Not at first, and very much so, yes. Uh, you see, the cosmic space giant Sarsaparilla had hoped to convince the other cosmic space giants on Team Yellow Magic of the dangers of Team Purple Magic getting their hands on the cosmos and gaining control of the Blizzard Wizard's magic bullshirt. Yeah, the Cosmic Space Giant. Uh, he hoped the other Cosmic Space Giants would be as scared as he was of what would happen if the, the big titty goth girls and tentacle monsters got their hands on all their toys. And they were all like, you can't break our toys, dude. Uh, we put some Cosmic Space Giant babies in some of them. Not just the big titty goth girls who scared him, he was also scared of the small titty goth girls, and the goth boys who kinda looked like small titty goth girls, and those lanky long-leggedy goths who are curiously ripped when they take their trench coats off. Oh, when the cosmic space giant Sassafras failed to convince the other cosmic space giants of the dangers posed by Team Purple Magic, well... He decided to take matters into his own hands. Yeah, and then he grew this bitch instead of horns. And he was all like, you made me join Team Green Magic, but I only joined Team Green Magic because I actually love Team Yellow Magic more than you do. I'm so tortured and you made me do this. And then he stabbed the planet. He tried to destroy our world, which contained the unrealized soul of a cosmic space giant for which our world of Azeroth is named. Fortunately for the life of this world, his efforts were thwarted by an elf who joined Team Greed Magic just to destroy him. I believe he is known to the long leggedies as Sick Daniel. Well, yeah, you got the Bubba, you got the Junior, you got the Bubba Junior. Yeah, yeah, this, this long leggedy, right? He, he was all like, I'm gonna spray myself with every scent of body spray there is all at once and become the edgiest edgelord that's ever edged a lord. You are not prepared. 
And the cosmic space giant was like, you'll never edge more lords than me. I'm gonna play the type of heavy metal music that big titty goth girls hate most. Uh, which is hard, because there's a surprisingly large overlap between goth and metal communities. Uh, but I could probably find a genre of metal that is a repellent to big titty goth girls, but is liked by teen green magic. But the cosmic space giant Sassy Asparagus could not find a genre of heavy metal music that was a universally repellent to the big titty goth girls, as well as the small titty goth girls and the goth boys who kind of look like small titty goth girls, and the lanky long leggedy goths who are curiously ripped when they take their trench coats off. And then he stabbed the planet. Well, there was this whole thing where Team Yellow Magic tried to force the long leggedy edgelord to join Team Yellow Magic. Uh, but the long leggedy was all, screw you, Team Green Magic for life. And he probably spelled four with a number and life with a Y. And there was probably a goat skull with green flames around it. And, and I imagine he played a wicked guitar riff when he said it. Or maybe his bard did. Or maybe he just did, played like an air guitar. Wingy, you got wing, you got glee, you got wingy. Indeed, Sick Danny and his posse of heroes and champions stopped the cosmic space giant uh, before his really big sword could destroy our world and all life on and within it. And to this day, his sword stands where he stuck it. A testament to the madness the Blizzard Wizard's magic bullshirt can drive a being to. And that's the story of how our planet got stabbed by a cosmic space giant with a really big sword. But now, there is word of a song, and whispers are being heard around the world. There are those who believe Team Purple Magic is preparing its bid to seize the Blizzard Wizard's magic bullshirt. Some say they're planning to unleash Sally the Naifu, a goth girl of great power, and that she and the King of the Long Leggedies have a great role yet to play in this tug of war for the Blizzard Wizard's magic bullshirt. Yeah, Kami, uh, you remember when I was telling you about the time this dead elf lady broke a guy's magic hat and the King of the Long Leggedies went to jail? Ooh, well, they say, they say the King of the Long Leggedies is out of jail now. Uh, he was seen around Ratchet around the same time that I met you. Ooh, how weird is that? It's certainly weirder than the professor being my mom's friend, that's for sure. That is indeed what they are saying. The King of the Long Legatees has been seen walking the lands of Kalimdor. And now, Kami, you are as caught up with the story as I am. Well, the pook was certainly accurate when she predicted I would enjoy your stories, Professor Leathergrip. Well, what did I say, Kami? What did the pook say? He probably knows more about the lore than any of those gnomish lore masters who study the lore in a book. Magic bullshirt of the blizzard wizard. Now that, that is weird. If you want weird, that story right there is weird. And Professor Leathergrip, he knows stuff that's weird. I mean, he knows my mom and that's, that's not weird. That's, that's totally not weird that he's my mom's hot friend. Bwinge! Oh, but I mean, uh, uh, I, I meant to say it was, uh, uh, the... Flee from the awkward! Flee from the awkward! I... I never... That is... I've never seen the pook do that before. Go to her, Wingay. I'll see to it that our friend Kami gets home safe and sound. But not the fly... <laughs> Wingay, Baba Junya. Oh, hey, Wingay. Huh. That was probably something weird you witnessed back there. Well, you got the Baba, you got the Junior, you got the Baba Junior. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I guess the Pook has been acting weird since I got back in town and ran into you. Uh, I'm sorry about that too, Wingay. Uh, when you were Andre, you were a colossal asshole. But that didn't justify the pook putting a bullet in your head. I mean, we're not exactly evenly matched power-wise. I lost my cool. And I'm sorry. 
Wingy, you got the wing, you got the, you got the wingy. I'm glad I didn't kill you. I mean, when you were Adrian, you were a real dink. But the Wingy Wubba Jr., well, I don't really know anything about this guy, now do I? Well, you got the Wubba, you got the Junior, you got the wing, you got the gay, you got the Wingy Wubba Jr. It's nice to see you're following your dreams of being a musician. Uh, you used to always talk about doing that back when you were a dink. Uh, but then again, you used to talk about a lot of stuff that dinks talk about doing. And you used to talk to the pook like you thought it was the pook's job to do the things you didn't want to do. And the pook! The pook has pook things to do. You got the wubba, you got the junior. Wingy, wubba junior. I guess what I'm saying is, if you're willing to give the pook a clean slate, the pook is willing to give you a clean slate too. It's weird, I, I don't really understand you, but I get the feeling Wingy Wubba Jr. is someone the pook might like to get to understand a little better. Wingy! Oh, and if I'm totally misreading the situation, and you're still the same dink that Adrian was, well, just remember, I'm the one who put the bullet in your head. But not a fly, Bubba Junior. <laughs> the pook, the pook is just shitting you, Wingy. Uh, I don't want things to be weird between you and the pook. Ah, oh, old gods, I, I can't believe the pook admitted I'm weirded out by how hot I find my mom's hot friend. I mean, we're both grown-ups now, and it's not like he's seen a lot of my mom over the years. You got the Bubba, you got the Junior. I mean, he's got that whole most interesting gnome in the world silver fox thing going on. Uh, why wouldn't my mom be friends with a guy like that? And okay, uh, maybe the pook has a type, but it's not like I'm saying that I want to put on something frilly and knit for him. Uh, the pook isn't looking to be domesticated. He's just my mom's hot friend. And I want to fuck him. I mean, if my mom didn't know him, and I didn't know him, we'd be fucking right now, Wingay. We'd be doing stuff. Stuff that would make my mama cry. And it wouldn't be weird at all, would it? No, no, because if not if my mom didn't know him. It's just, you know, a gnome. Fucking another gnome who's hot. Because then he wouldn't be my mom's hot friend. That wouldn't be weird at all now, would it? But no, my mom has a hot friend that she's known longer than she's known me. And because of that, it's the pook's weird problem. And the pook is sitting here in wet leather, and the pook hates wearing wet leather. Wingy, Baba Junior.